What's going on everybody? David here back with another video. So we're gonna do a stimulus package, stimulus check update. We're gonna talk a little bit about where we are right now when it comes to the next round of stimulus checks. We're also gonna take a look at what we know so far when it comes to Biden's new infrastructure bill. But first off, you guys can do me a favor, please hit the like button. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell notification, that way you'll get notified anytime we put out a video. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about where we are when it comes to stimulus checks. So I have had people indicate, now the IRS still is not letting us know exactly who they're sending the checks to. They put out a tweet a couple of days ago pretty much saying that checks are on the way, but they haven't let us know, is it gonna be paper checks, direct deposit? So we're still kind of up in the air when it comes to that. We just know all of that stuff has gone out. Uh, so. Uh, I have had people let me know that they're receiving paper checks and they're also receiving those debit cards. Uh, so that's good. So be on the lookout for those. Check your mail. Some people have indicated that the last time they received direct deposit, this time for whatever reason, they're receiving a paper check or they're receiving a debit card. Uh, so just because you got a, a direct deposit last time, you might not be getting direct deposit this time. I don't know why, but that's just what's happening and maybe they don't have your banking information anymore for whatever reason, I don't know. But that is the situation for some people. Uh, so be aware of that. Uh, you might be receiving paper checks. Now, as far as direct deposits, hopefully we'll see a big round of direct deposits go out on the 31st, so on Wednesday, tomorrow. So we'll have to stay tuned for that. Please let me know if you do receive something on the 31st, let me know, then I can let other people know and make sure you come back to the channel, hit that little bell notification so you can subscribe, hit the little bell notification. That way you'll know because I'm gonna be coming back on Wednesday. I'll probably do multiple videos on Wednesday uh, just to keep you guys up to date. So I'll have one in the morning and then later on uh, in the afternoon, let you know what people are telling me when it comes to uh, if they're receiving their checks or if they haven't received their checks yet. Uh, so we'll we'll do that. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna talk a little bit about Biden's plan, his infrastructure bill, okay? Cause this is this is the next thing, okay? And you might just be thinking, well, infrastructure doesn't really pertain to individuals, but you'll be surprised. There's a lot of stuff in here that's gonna help people, uh, people who are going to college as well as people who are our lower income as far as housing and things like that. There are there are things that are gonna be in this next infrastructure uh, package that's gonna help a lot of different people. And so we're gonna go over what we know so far. Now this is stuff that has been leaked, okay? So this is not information that has been confirmed. We'll see, President Biden will, will have a speech on Wednesday and he's gonna let us know a little bit more about this, this package, okay? Now he wants to break it up into two packages and let's talk a little bit about uh, what, how he's gonna do this, okay? So this is the Build Back Better uh, package that he's talking about here. So it's gonna be $3 trillion or around that number. It's gonna be infrastructure and jobs, okay? It's gonna be an infrastructure and jobs package. So that is the way that he's gonna roll this out. Now, it will be, part of it is the infrastructure, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And then the other part, would be the jobs and school and stuff like that. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it. We'll break it all down so you guys can understand exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, so when it comes to the infrastructure plan, and one other thing, we don't know if they're gonna roll them all out together, or are they gonna try to get one pass first, so get the infrastructure part passed first, and then do the jobs second? We don't know, we don't know exactly how that's gonna work. But as far as infrastructure, what we do know so far is that uh, the, the plan is to repair the nation's roads, bridges, waterways, rails, retrofitting, uh, plus retrofitting buildings, okay? And that includes schools and things like that. Uh, also, $100 billion for school education and infrastructure, okay? So I don't know if they're really gonna be able to do any more when it comes to schools as far as more money for schools. Uh, that's gonna be tough because we saw in the last three stimulus packages, they had money for schools. So I think it's gonna be really hard to get another 100 billion uh, for schools, but we'll have to follow it and see where that goes. Now, this is all a proposal. This is this is nothing, you know, basically what's happening is the president is putting out his plan and it's gonna be up to Congress in order to get this done. So a lot of this stuff can change, but this is what the president wants. All right, $400 billion to combat climate change. So that's what they, they wanna do there. $600 billion for green transit. So that would be like buses, maybe electric uh, buses and uh, metro, uh, electric metro rails and 
uh, trains and things like that. $46 billion for climate-related research and development. Uh, build more electric vehicle charge stations. Now, this is big for me because I am interested in buying an electric vehicle. And one of the drawbacks of having an electric vehicle is if you want to go on long trips, it, it, it sometimes it's a little difficult to find these different charging stations. And so if they start building more charging stations, that would mean more people would probably be open to buying electric vehicles. I know I will. And so I think this is something uh, that in the future could really benefit a lot of people. $200 billion for housing infrastructure, okay? And $100 billion to expand the supply of housing for lower income Americans. Uh, so that's something that's also in this infrastructure bill. And like I said, it's not just for building roads and bridges, but they're also, they also wanna help uh, people who are, are low income as well. Okay, now that was the infrastructure part. Now let's go ahead and dive into the jobs package and the domestic uh, priorities. Okay, so the first thing that they want to do here is universal pre-K and free community college tuition. I think this is going to be really big for free community college if they can get this get this through. Uh, I personally, I, I went to college and and received a four year degree. I loved going to college, but it is very expensive, and colleges all over the U.S. are way overpriced. The college is expensive, and everything that that has to do with college is expensive. So that would mean housing as far and, and books and food and all that stuff is really expensive and they do it only because they can get away with it. They can get away with it because there are no other options. I mean, there are other colleges, but all the prices are pretty much the same. And if you live like in California, like me, you have the state, the Cal State system, and you have the university system and the, the, the prices are, are pretty much the same. And then if you get into the private industry, private colleges, that's even more expensive. So uh, because of that, I, I think they need to do something. Now, if you have free community college, that would give uh, kids uh, an ability to go to community college for two years for free and then transfer to a four-year uh, college and then just do two years there and not pay. They pay half the price of what they would be paying if they just went straight to a four-year. Uh, so uh, I think this is something that hopefully will get some support and, and I'm all on board for it because I, I, I'm telling you, when you graduate from college and have this big, big debt over your head, like I did, it's, it's, it's just crazy. It, it really is. I mean, you're starting off on a, on a bad, a bad situation already, just getting out of college, you're looking for jobs and you owe a lot of money already. Uh, so it really sets people back. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about the rest here. So expand spending for childcare. So that's something that he wants to uh, have in this, in this bill and then extend uh, the child tax credit for several years. Okay, so the child tax credit, that will start sometime in July, and that child tax credit, hopefully, they can extend that out even further. And so that is the talk, that's what uh, President Biden wants to do. We'll have to see where that goes, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about when, it's, when I talk about the child tax credit, we're talking about the $3,600 that you're hearing for uh, children five years or under, or the $3,000 that you're hearing for uh, children from six to 17. So that is, is what we're talking about here. And they're talking about doing it as reoccurring payments, which would mean uh, that uh, if it's a child five years or under, you're gonna receive $300 per month. If it's a child 16 or six to 17, then you're gonna receive uh, $250 per month. Uh, and that's per child. And there's no, there's no limit. So you can have, if you have 10 children, you're gonna get you're gonna get that tax credit for all your children. Okay, extend subsidies for the Affordable Care Act. Uh, so that's something that they, they want to uh, continue doing. And then free or reduced tuition for historically black colleges and universities. So that's something else uh, that will be out there as far as colleges, you have another alternative uh, there. And then force, this is big, force pharmaceutical companies to lower their prices and pay or pay a steep penalty. I think this is, this is really good because we're spending a lot of money. Now, in, in the healthcare system, when it comes to a prescription uh, medication, we spend a lot of money. And you, when you go to Mexico or you go to Canada, it's a lot cheaper. The same medication is a lot cheaper. And I live in California, Southern California, and you have people that will go over the border, go to Mexico, just to get prescription medication because it's a lot cheaper over there than it is here. Uh, and that that's a shame. That's a shame that, that we're in a situation where we have to pay more just because of where we live. And so if they could really target that and, and get these these uh, pharmaceutical companies to lower their, their prices 
and, and make it more reasonable, I think that would be good. It's, it's a win for everyone. Uh, plus, the Medicare system, it would help them a lot, tremendously. And so uh, th- this is something else that, that we need to think about. So even if you're not getting prescription medication, when you're thinking about when you pay your taxes, some of that money is going to Medicare. And guess what? Some of that money could be saved if the phar- pharmaceutical companies were, were playing fair when it came to the pricing. Okay, so how does President Biden want to do all this? How are we going to fund all this? Okay, so part of the funding, and I won't say all of the funding, but part of the funding is it going to come from raising corporate tax uh, rate from 21% to 28%, okay? And then increasing taxes on wealthy investors. So that is his plan, and we've heard him talk a little bit about if you make 400000 or more, then you're going to pay more in taxes, a, a little bit more, not not much, but uh, that is his focus right now. That's that's the revenue source uh, that, we're, that we're hearing about right now. Now, we don't know. There could be more out there. But uh, as of right now, that that's what the talk is. Now, how is this all going to play out? Because it's going to be very important to see what they do and how they do it. So are they going to do are they going to split this into two different bills and then try to pass those bills separately? Are they going to put it in one big package and try to pass it? We don't we don't know exactly how they're going to do it. And at this point, I don't even think they know uh, they haven't given it, us any information when it comes to this. Now, budget reconciliation, this uh, right now, we, we, we can't use budget reconciliation anymore until October 1st, okay? Uh, this would be partially a spending bill. There's some revenue in there as well. Uh, they would have to really fine-tune this. I have heard that Senator Schumer is trying to come up with uh, a, a way to get this, to use budget reconciliation in order to pass this uh, bill, but this is something that would have to go to the Senate parliamentarian and... At this point, she's probably not going to be on board for the, the they're trying to maneuver around budget reconciliation because for a spending bill, you can only use budget reconciliation once per fiscal year. OK, so that means October 1st, that's when they can use it again. But if they can kind of finagle this into a different category, then maybe they can use budget reconciliation for it and say, well, it's not spending. It's more revenue. We'll have to see how they do that. OK, but that's. That's the talk. Now, what I think will probably end up happening is I think they'll separate this. So it'll be two different bills. They'll try to pass one bill and just have the House pass it, send it over to the Senate, see what the Senate does with it. If they turn it down, then at least that opens up a dialogue and they can start negotiating. I think that's what's going to probably happen. And then the House will pass the second portion of the bill the same way, send it over to the Senate, and then they'll open up negotiations and they'll they'll see where everyone is when it comes to uh, negotiating this these this bill this big bill, and then if they can't get anything done, then October first that's when budget reconciliation is an option, and maybe they can use budget reconciliation at that time. And also, just because there there's an uh, opportunity to do budget reconciliation in October, maybe that will push the needle when it comes to some of these politicians. They'll see okay, well. We can get a little bit of what we want now or none of what we want in October because they'll just go budget reconciliation. So maybe that is the strategy. We'll, we'll have to follow it and see where it goes. And also, I want to talk a little bit about the $200 raise for Social Security. Now, if it's not in this package, that's something that needs to be brought to the to the table. OK, so that's something where you need to contact your 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 Congress people. Let them know, look, we want this. You have this big package going through. It does have some things in there that, you know, free money for college and things like that help people on Social Security as well. So call your Congress people in the description. I have that information all there so you can call them. You can also tweet them. So you can, if you have a Twitter account, you can get on there, just type in their name, find out who your congressperson is, type in their name, and then let them know how you feel about this $200 raise for Social Security. Now, most of the videos that I make, I do go over to Twitter and I do share them on Twitter. Uh, so, and I encourage you to do the same. If you, if you like what I'm saying in these videos, share it on Twitter, share it with some of these different politicians uh, so they can see that there's some support for this $200 raise, because I'm telling you, we know how things work. When politicians stop talking about something, if, it, if, it, if we don't keep that conversation going, then guess what? They're going to forget about it and they're going to move on to the next thing. Uh, so I think it's very, very important for you to to follow along when it comes to the $200 raise. And I also did a video about that. So I'll post a link up here so you guys can check it out. I'll also have a link at the end of this video uh, just to go into more detail to kind of tell you a little bit about what this $200 raise uh, could do for, for uh, people that are on Social Security. 
So that's all I have for you guys. Uh, thank you guys all for stopping by. Like I said, hopefully tomorrow, the 31st will be a big day for, for most people. They'll be able to receive their stimulus checks. Uh, so make sure you let me know uh, if you did receive yours. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.